Hi all, let's have a look at game 14 sent to me as part of the 20 game set of games from DeepMind recently. So d4 from Alpha Zero, Stockfish 8 played Knight f6, c4, e6. We enter into in this book line, this is a T-Sec book line actually, Nimzo Indian Defense. We have the Rubenstein variation, and this is a very popular uh, system. Knight f3 here, Bishop takes, b takes. And now, actually, d6, and here is the end of the book. So alpha zero in this position did play the, one of the standard moves, e4, and usually in chess-based live book, it's thought that black should play e5 here. Uh, and an example continuation, for example, d5, knight e7, knight h4, h6, f4 very aggressive but knight g6 and it's thought that black should have good prospects here while well, there's only a minimal advantage the bishop is closed in here and black although has double pawns uh, later that can be useful even for something like taking in g5 later and maybe even the f4 square is as handy as a peg so this is thought to be okay but um stockfish eight kind of improvised here with h6 and actually the reaction is very interesting from alpha zero the e5 which is the standard book move which is omitted here is it's seemingly punished e5 by white playing e5 d takes and actually not d takes e5 but knight takes e5 very interesting problems are being set for black here now in this position c takes d4 was played as far as knight takes e e5 is concerned it seems as though white does well with bishop f4 here this is an attacking bind you'll note if white castles then there's like standard rook lefts uh later like rook e3 to g3 if if white castles there's so there's good attacking prospects uh just just to show an example say queen c7 white can actually just castle here uh, this pin is very dangerous say black castles queen g4 and, and in fact even here just with a direct queen g4 there are big uh, ominous threats if black took on e5 queen takes queen g3 pardon me f6 rook a e1 uh, there's a fascinating uh, attacking potential in this position actually with an exchange sack it seems as though white can actually build up huge pressure with a potential rook left coming up with rook f3 in this position this position actually is very bleak for black for example rook takes h6 is crushing uh, here this is just absolutely murderous and you might think well what what is this if g takes if g takes then there's queen g4 check that's so yeah there's big attacking potential it seems uh in this position with bishop f4 uh direct attacking potential and also slower with rook lefts so black actually just played c takes d4 and now knight takes b takes and now just casually castling now stockfish eight sometimes seems a little bit materialistic its king is in the center but it takes time out to take another pawn now this looks a little bit dodgy from this perspective of bishop a3 keeping the king in the center if black had castled c takes d4 is possible because of that standard tactic if queen takes there's bishop h7 check then winning the queen so white's got actually here a very nice position because this bishop's a little bit closed in now as an example say queen d6 to prevent bishop f4 c5 rook e1 and there's a rook left idea here which is also pretty dangerous uh, but it can be improved on even uh, for example here just direct play with the queen provoking f5 and it's just a very nice position Look at that clamp on e5, the backward pawn on the semi open file. Very nice for white, small edge at least. So black got greedy though, 
Stockfish got greedy and took on c3. Now we have the fun of the king in the centre here. So bishop a3 is played. Queen c7. Queen f3 which ties the c pawn down. Because black might want to play c5 to lock out the bishop. That's not possible because of queen takes a8. So we have rook b8 preparing c5. But now bishop c5 present, prevents c5 for black. We have now uh, e5. Now rook f e1. Bishop e6. Queen g3, which hits g7 and e5. Black reacts with knight h5. A tactical response. After queen e3, the knight installs itself and now is hitting the bishop. So there's no queen e5. So it seems as though Stockfish, on the surface, is solving many key problems. And the bishop shielding the king uh, on the e file. So isn't this okay for black? Has black got away with it? Interesting. Let's count the pawns again. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two pawns down. And it looks as though even the king's going to be fine on f7. What's the problem? What's the problem for black? Well, interestingly here, there are problems after this next very, very powerful, very, very deep move, which is h4. You need to, if if you're checking this game with Stockfish, then you need to go to like depth 30 plus and it starts turning up this move. It has got a long term potential to sometimes trap the knight on g3, knight h3. The knight can be stranded on h3 without knight g5. And that's that's a very important idea here, it seems. And h4 uh, supports that. If bishop takes c4, by the way, then uh, that's pin is invoked queen takes f4 uh, so there's g3 on the cards and it's uncomfortable for black here so we have the move actually queen a5 but just just to show the absolute power of h4 a little bit if we play g3 knight h3 check uh, king g2 there's the potential escape knight g5 uh, say king f7 f4 Rook b2, and there's pain on the on the second rank here as well. Uh, so say this position, it should be about even. For example, here there's bishop f5. The knight can come back to g5. Black's happy enough. So this move h4 casts a shadow on the knight getting out that easily. A long-term shadow. We have queen a5. Uh, on knight h5 here, Bishop g6 check, bishop f7, bishop f5. And now let's say rook d8, queen f3, g5, rook a d1. This position is very uncomfortable for black because of bishop e4. And you see here this crossfire of the bishops with the king trapped in the center. White's now threatening bishop takes c6. So say here bishops, bishop takes uh, that that gives the king f7. So, but we can improve now with just bishop takes and queen takes. But what does what else does black actually do here? Uh, if g4 bishop takes c6 is crushing, is that low king f7? Uh, so very very tricky position for knight h5. Uh, so queen a5 is played, and. Uh, just one more thing though, g5 here, let's have a look at this, g5, g3, rook g8, tactical idea to win the queen on g takes, so that would be winning the queen. But white here plays king h2 and even allows knight g6, but there's problems here after rook ad1, there's other problems now to deal with. For example here, bishop d6, and I'm winning the exchange, and you might think, well, couldn't black doesn't black have time to do anything? It's a, just a very very tricky position. Uh, just technically, it's it's very dangerous for black. So anyway, stuff like that is avoided. Queen a5 is played. We have rook a b1. Now king f7 at least connecting the rooks. Hello hello. G3. Yeah, and this knight is in big trouble now. We have black playing queen takes a2 on knight h3 check. King g2 
it's a kind of long term tactic uh, in terms of the knight being trapped. So, for example, the knight's out of the game, white can put pressure on other parts of the board. For example, like this, get the pawn uh, back, tie the queen down now to protecting, otherwise, it's two pieces for a rook, and then take on a5. So, black's kind of overloaded here with a5 attacked h3 attacked it's it's an overload scenario and with that pawn it starts to get tricky you know that outside pass pawn and the knight's going to be hemmed in for a long time so it's quite it's quite a deep trap based on initially it was about the king in the center but then it, attention was turned to this poor knight so uh we have actually queen takes a2 hitting the bishop uh, now this bishop is protected so g takes queen takes c2 yeah black's doing very well there with pressure on b1 so this uh protects the bishop and also is attacking as well potentially with this and this because the bishop's controlling the escape square so this is even more effective and a check like this which would push the, the king back and sometimes win a rook sometimes so we have uh queen takes c4 and now queen takes c6 so introducing these horrible ideas uh, here, instead of queen takes c4, let's have a quick look at f5. There's queen takes e5, and big trouble because the queen is eyeing b8 immediately. So, for example, here g takes, and uh, this is threatening queen takes e6 mate. Uh, so, if takes here, there's queen takes e6 mate. So, if rook h e8, there's rook takes b8. So, it's all pretty crushing. Uh, on knight h5 instead of f5 uh, we have queen g6 check and yeah this is just mating so yeah queen takes c4 was the lesser even when we've chosen by black queen takes c6 uh, now white could have equally I mean effectively played just to cash out the position here actually it's already pretty good after taking this is a piece up for not much so very very good position at this point so queen takes c6 and knight d3 yeah black's just crumbling here basically uh there's no real point playing the check because of you know um i was about to say king g2 no no you don't play king g2 there because the bishop d5 if a check here let's have a quick look at this so king g2 would run into bishop d5 check so king h2 i believe is the move here and then there's still huge threats okay so but uh let's have a look so knight d3 was played rook takes rook takes check and white is simply cashing out winning material this way basically now there is uh light squares to worry about and bishop d5 points at queen f3 to try and get a mating pattern but king h2 provides now the resource rook g1 to defend g2 we have c2 and now queen b2 is played uh, now here if queen f3 then white picks off this pawn with check and then has time for rook g1 big advice so uh, we have a5 queen c1 a4 queen e3 yeah black's just a piece down here but let's have a look at the technique for a moment the king comes in aggressively and now this king comes in the center and the rooks cut off for a moment but rook f1 f5 rook f2 and now bishop a3 blockade on the dark squares now this is taken check and yeah white's just basically a rook up these pawns are not really doing too much and the game was adjudicated as a win here so this is a kind of evidence of theoretical punishment if black plays the provocative h6 white seems to get a good game with e5 from the evidence of the variations in the game itself here so maybe that's something to bear in mind for rubenstein players against the nimzo engine defense uh, maybe they've sometimes seen h6 and wondered should they play e5 this seems to be offering very good attacking prospects uh, in the variations checked 
here. I hope you got something from this game, enjoyed it, and maybe click the top left box, which should appear shortly to become a member at chessworld.net. Play other YouTubers. You can also check the YouTube analysis in advance of these games from the improved menu. Learn from the Masters YouTube order button. Okay, comments, questions, donations, see the description. Like, share, subscribe with the notification bell. All really appreciated. And also, of course, there's a new Teespring store in the description as well. Okay, thanks very much.